Voters are up for grab here in Tetelveta County and the opposition through the NASA coalition is banking on this county in the rest to state house Francis and Telaki. KT News, Boy, Taita Taveta. All right, so that's the politics of the day. We want to get into a different kind of uh, politics here in studio. Joining me right now is Boniface Mwangi. He is my guest anchor this evening, but he's also running from, for the uh, Starehe member of uh, parliament seat. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Sanya. So when we started, we were talking about this uh, Ten Bob revolution that you started a week ago, and quite a number of uh, reactions there. People are asking, what happens uh, to this money? What is this money for? When you get to 10 million, what is this money for? So I'm campaigning. I need money for post. Mm -hmm. I have volunteers that I pay every single day to go around campaigning with me. Mm -hmm. I need to have a few billboards. I'll have to, I need to have polling agents. Every day, every working moment when you go out to campaign, you need to spend money. Uh, you have airtime, you have lunch, mm -hmm. you have a social media team, you have a photographer, you have a videographer. Mm -hmm. and all that, uh, that's actually money that you have to spend. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a rich guy, I don't have money. So that's why I'm asking Kenyans to donate to my campaign. And you're always talking about that, that you're not a rich guy. But then yeah. the, someone would ask, why did you start now? Is it that uh, you did not anticipate that you know, campaigning is this expensive? No, actually I anticipated this all along. Mm -hmm. I, the way politics work in other countries is that the people fund the politician mm -hmm. and then the politician is accountable to the people. Yeah. In this country, someone steals a lot of money then they run to parliament to protect the, the ill-gotten wealth. If you look at some of the poor vying in this election, they have big, very big scandals in the, from the public sector or they stole from the government or wherever they're working. But in an ideal country, um, so the people should fund the politician. Mm -hmm. So because if you fund me, I'm accountable to you. For every single person who sent their 10 shillings, their 5 bob, their 30 bob, their 1,000 shillings, mm -hmm. I'm accountable to them. I'll have to to be their voice in parliament mm -hmm. and allowed to work for them. Right. And that's in 1961, Timo left prison, a very poor man. The people of Ugatundu came together, they fundraised to build him a house, and they built him, a, and they built him for him a house. Uh, before that, when he went to the UK, he was sent by peasants. They fundraised to send him away. So in our politics, about 50 years ago, we used to fund our politicians. Mm -hmm. Today, they steal our money or they become investors. So ideally, most of the people who are buying today are going to take a bank loan or sell some land mm. because for them it's an investment. Mm. When they get to parliament, they steal. And a good example is Tarehe. So last year, CDF was about 70 million shillings. Mm -hmm. According to Edward, the Auditor General report, last year, Tarehe lost about 40 million shillings. You know why? Because the, the, the incumbent is an investor. He'll bribe people with 50 bob, 100 shillings. When he goes to parliament, CDF eaten, any other money eaten, the lot land grabbed. All right, let's talk about Boni. Let's, let's first concentrate about uh, on Boni a bit. Yes. So earlier on, you were also describing the, the way that you've been running your campaigns, and you're saying you're meeting people uh, door to door, meeting people not from the cars, like you mentioned. Yes. What has your reception? What has the reception on the ground been for you like? So so much love. Some mm -hmm. people are going to vote for me because for the first time in their life, they're meeting someone who's went for office. I met a lady who voted for the first time in 1974, mm -hmm. and she says that she has never met a politician walking. So meeting me was like a very big thing. Mm. I walk around and have no bodyguards. I'm talking to the voters one by one. I think people's expression is t-shirt, free t-shirt, yeah. uh, free money, something, eh? you know, mkonom tupi ulambui. But they get surprised that actually I have no money, but I'm willing to talk. Mm -hmm. So I sit down and listen to their stories and then share what I'm going to do with, with the, right. uh, in Stare. I think the saddest thing that I've come across is actually instead of people asking you, what is your vision? Mm -hmm. Why are you vying? What's your manifesto? Mm. What you gonna do? They ask you, Chama Gani, mm. Pesangapi. Mm. Chama, a political party will not build Starehe mm -hmm. or build this country. The aspirant is the one who's going to work for you, the person who wins, not the party. So this thing about big parties is you actually get away from people's mind. Right. Because you need to elect someone based on their policies and their vision, not the party, not the tribe, and not how much money they have. All right. It's interesting, Bonnie, just hearing you talk, you've said that uh, you, you met this lady and she mm. referred to you, I've never seen a politician, you know, walking. And it's so interesting to hear, you know, you uh, refer to yourself as a politician because you've come from so far. Uh, why did you decide to go into politics? You know, at some point you're saying that, you know, it is a dirty game. So why get dirty? Uh, I'm a clean guy, going to clean up the place. I got tired. I got tired of not being listened to. I used to protest and go to parliament and present a petition. They threw it in the dustbin. 
I went protest against mm -hmm. MP salaries. I got beaten. I was arrested and taken to jail. So I'm running to, to go to parliament, to become a voice in parliament. Uh, my biggest complaint is actually, I grew up, I'm a, I'm a son of a hawker. My mother was a hawker. I was a hawker. And Nairobi and Star is full of informal traders. Mm -hmm. I want to go to parliament to pass legislation to protect informal traders. Mm -hmm. If you're a Juakali person, if you're a tout, a Boda Boda guy, if you work in the informal sector, there needs to be laws to protect you. Mm -hmm. The Kanjo Kingdom, City Council Ascari's right. kingdom, is worth 1.6 billion shillings. Uh, people in Starehe and this city pay about 100 million shillings per month on bribes. We need to pass laws to protect those people. And once we do that, we also need to pass another law to ensure that Kanjo wear uniform. The biggest complaint that I've come across from every person, right. someone is selling cereals, Njigukaranga, Mahindi, mm -hmm. Maharagwe, and I'm going to copy a fire extinguisher. Fire That's, extinguisher? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are these vehicles that go around town and people wearing civilian clothes arresting people. Mm -hmm. Some of them are even fake kanjos. Mm -hmm. They extort from informal traders, mm -hmm. they stab them and harass them. Mm -hmm. So there needs to be a law to protect these people. That's number one. Number two, kanjos must wear a uniform. Mm -hmm. So some of the things that I've actually been protesting about can only be passed in parliament. Playgrounds protection. Mm -hmm. We reclaimed Langata Primary mm -hmm. School. Uh, Sarai has about 147 primary schools. They need to be protected from land grabbers. The place the school are into has already been grabbed. Mm -hmm. Also, accountability. CDF money is stolen. Mm -hmm. uh, Ziwani needs an artificial turf. Most of the grounds in Stareha are called desert because desert. grass never grows. Desert, desert, desert. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Where Wanyama played, Mariga, mm -hmm. or Leech. Mm -hmm. So when I become the member of parliament for Starehe, I ensure that every, every ward has an artificial turf field. And then insecurity. Nairobi is full of insecurity. Mm -hmm. Starehe is Nairobi. Parliament, Central Bank, Moy Avenue, mm -hmm. Uhuru Park, all these beautiful buildings are in Starehe. Mm -hmm. It's a very key place to do that. So what, what, I, what will I do about it? We need to upgrade our markets. That is Kariako Market, mm -hmm. Modurwa, Marikiti, Ngara Market, and then light them very well, share there's water and sanitation facilities, and make them 24 hours. The reason why they close of insecurity. You can't shop at night because you don't feel safe. But if they work 24 hours and there's lighting enough, people are going to shop at night. I would like you to go for a date to Huru Park mm. and feel safe. <laughs> I'd like that too. So, Bonnie, all these things that you're saying, really, they sound, they sound great. They sound like great ideas, uh, you know, and if indeed they come to fruition, of course, uh, we'd expect some great change in Starehe. Yes. But the thing is, all these things, I mean, they seem so basic when you talk about security. Of course, people li need to live uh, in a place where, that is safe, where, yes. where they feel safe. Do you mean like all this time, all these things that you're talking about have not, nothing they has been done? They haven't been done. Nairobi is a very dark, dirty city. Uh, we pay taxes to city council and also have to pay private garbage collectors. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no one pushing for accountability for money collected by the national government and the county government. I want to be in parliament as the voice of the people and also organize people to take actually action. Mm -hmm. What I'm known for is courage, that I stand up when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do is actually have many of us doing the same thing. Uh, as a member of parliament, I'll have a mandate from the people of Starehe to speak on their behalf. So I'm in Starehe, I'll be speaking on behalf of the people of Starehe mm -hmm. and saying that Starehe people want security and we're going to go about it. So in, in partnership with the county government, whoever is going to become the next governor, I'll work with them to ensure that Nairobi is actually safer and cleaner. Nairobi is the heart of this country. Right, right. If we sneeze, the whole country gets a cold. Mm, mm. So the, it's the very whole key. East Africa region. The That's other true. thing about Nairobi that people need to understand right now is that Nairobi has some of the best, Starehe has the, some of the best lands. We have the Ngara Old Estate, we have Pangani, we have Land Mawe, we have Mudurwa, and then we have Ziwani. Some people, they've been in a market for demolition and gentrification. They're going to build new houses. Most of those residents are going to lose their homes. And so I'm going to be their voice to ensure that they don't lose their, their homes and they get compensated for the land they're living in right now. All right. So if you look at the way the election is going on mm -hmm. right now, people with interest on this land are backing some people to ensure that the land is grabbed. But in my watch, the land will not be grabbed. Let's also talk about young people because the unemployment rate in Kenya is skyrocketing. What is it that you'll do to ensure that you empower mm. young people as young as you? So number one in every ward in Starehe, mm -hmm. uh, we are going to have social centers and we're going to have a work readiness training program. When you leave high school, you come there, uh, you learn how to write your CV, how to present yourself, how to dress for an interview. Do you pay for this? No, it will be free. Really? So, so, so CDF money mm -hmm. is supposed to go for education and security. So in the social halls, in every, social halls have been grabbed, so yeah. you need to actually build new halls. 
And so we'll have to actually work with the people who do business in Starehe, mm -hmm. uh, the corporate companies to partner with them to build back the social halls. Mm -hmm. So in those social halls, when you learn those skills, mm -hmm. we'll try, try and find for you a placement somewhere you can be able to work. But remember, when you have a 24-hour market in Starehe, you're creating jobs through that. Mm -hmm. Interesting. What do you think? And also, guess oh, art, art. I'm an artist. I'm waiting yes. for that. I'm just like, <laughs> so uh, I have a track record of creating employment. I was the director of Power 254 for five years, uh, where we sent artists to the US, to Canada, mm. to Europe. Uh, we helped incubate some of the best artists in this country. Mm. Uh, we helped Giuliani open a hub in Dendora, had the band, Sarabi band. Mm teardrops, graffiti artists like Smokey, Bank Slaves, Swift. So we're going to have an arts fund in Starre. So every social center will actually have an art hub mm -hmm. and will actually partner to look for money to actually build studios. So you don't have to come all the way from uh, Ziwani or Kariako to come to the city center to record your music. We are going to nurture talent. Uh, Mariga and Wanyama are from Starehe. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a sports fund to ensure that if you're, a, if, you're, if you're a promising sports person, you don't even need to do a fundraiser, you want to go to trials abroad, we'll send you easily. All right. All we need uh -huh. in Starehe uh -huh. is accountability. There's even money for bursaries that is given out based on your tribe uh -huh. or political party or affiliation. When I become the member of parliament for Starehe, there'll be no discrimination when you give bursaries. It will be equally distributed to everyone. To everyone. Let's also talk about uh, your competitors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we had one of them here on the show uh, a few weeks yeah. ago. Uh, what do you think of them and what do you think about... So uh, which one, the social light or the corner? No, no, let, 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 let's, let's calm down. Let's calm down, Woody. Let's it depends. Just talk. Let me know which one. <laughs> which okay, one let's you? start with uh, Jaguar. The car or the animal? No, 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 the, 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 the Charles. That's oh, the musician. The, oh, yeah. He is running. He is your competitor. What do you think about him? I've never had Does him Does he stand a chance? Uh, so I've never had him speak. Mm -hmm. I don't know what his plan for Starehe are. I don't know. I haven't seen his manifesto. Mine is available on my website, on my timeline. Mm -hmm. I, I think he's, he can sing. He has a bit of talent, so he should stick to singing. And wow. I would like to invite him and Mbogo for a public debate about what we have for Starehe. Mm -hmm. I think it would be nice for, to present our ideas to the public and the people that we want to serve and say, this is what I stand for and this is my track record. Mm -hmm. Because I want people to vote knowing that everybody has a track record. So what has Jago done? Mm. Mbogo, what do you think of him? He was here a few weeks ago and uh, he said, Boni Boni is a heckler. That's what he called you. And uh, I'm a very, 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 very proud heckler. Uh, there was a heckler in this country mm -hmm. who changed the history of this nation. Um, because of our heckling, we still have Uhuru Park today. Because of our heckling, we still have Karura Forest. Mm -hmm. Because of our heckling, we have the only Nobel Peace Prize winner in this country. And her name was Wangari Madai. So heckling has taken this country far. Mm -hmm. Because of heckling, we have multi-party democracy. Mm -hmm. Because of heckling, uh, the, the dictatorship mm -hmm. ended. So heckling plays a role. Because of heckling, Langata Primary School kids have a playground. So the only thing I know about Mbogo, I read in the nation last year, where it was called a Coleman and a Ford star. And he came here and he said that he's a business person. Well, that was not, it wasn't proven. It, let's, it, let's it, not it was in the newspaper, but I will say this about mm -hmm. him. Um, I used to work at Power and I employed people. And uh, if you want to know my tax returns, they are at KRA and can, I'll make my tax returns public. And I'd like him to do the same about his. He doesn't know he, what business does he do? What does he sell? How many people has he employed? Because when someone comes in and sits and says they, they do business, the follow-up question should be, what business do you do? Mm -hmm. What do you sell? So I think the media should actually dig deeper because you're dealing with a con man. Let's not and call him a con man. Let's, let's no, not call, everybody has their, 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 you know, their, uh, their right to, you know, to go for such a It's such fine, a it's here. fine. But if the moment you're running for public office, you should be open for scrutiny. Let me tell you, it is important because if we don't scrutinize candidates, we're going to leave our future to the hands of con men, drug dealers, swindlers, and all manner of characters. Mm -hmm. I don't want my kids to do drugs. I'm not going to vote for a drug dealer. So it is important mm -hmm. if you're going to vote for someone or even employ someone, because election is about employment. I'm looking for a job to become a member of parliament. I want to go to parliament to get my salaries cut. And I have a track record of saying salaries must fall. Mm -hmm. So you need to ask me, where were you when Garissa massacre happened? What did you do? Mm -hmm. Where were you when Lagata Primary School happened? Where were you when this happened? Because 
you will end up voting for someone who just wants to look good. So what if uh, August 8th comes and uh, Bonnie, you're not the one who takes the day? That what will happens? Not, that will not happen. I'm the one campaigning. I'm on the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to the people of Starehe. They're smart people. They can see through crap. Mm -hmm. They can see the truth. And I'll get elected. Because if you were to judge even on my CV and track record, I'm the better candidate. So why should I feel inferior? I'm going to come one above all. So I'll be the number one. You'll be number one. Yes. All right, Bonnie. So we'll continue the conversation a bit later on. But for now, though, I want us to, uh, I want you to read the news. Let's, 